Hello everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. This is my floss tube series here on YouTube where we talk about all things stitching. This is floss tube number 85. It is Sunday, uh, May 19th, 2024. I had to think about that for a minute and I am so glad you're here joining me today. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I am so grateful and so glad you're here. And if you are a brand new subscriber, thank you got so much for subscribing and joining me. This, as I mentioned, is where I share all about my stitching and stitching journeys. And I do come here pretty much every week just to kind of share what I've been up to. This week I had a big FFO, um, a finishing tutorial for the Biscornu, which was my seasonal Biscornu Flossiversary style 2024. My, yes, my actual Flossiversary, my two year Flossiversary was May 17th. And um, I've been doing this for two years, doing this, uh, fun little chit chat type video just talking about uh, stitching quilting all of the good stuff so um i am going to talk a little bit about that i am going to share the cells that i am working on a new cell started this last week it's kind of an informal cell that i am doing with my friends jessica and chantal and i'll show my progress my start and my progress on that i have been working on the botanical bee cell by my friend shari I have a new start, my Mother's Day start, which was This Is The Day by Plum Street Sampler. And then I also have a stitching finish, which was something that I showed, I think I showed it last week that I had been working on it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please stay tuned. I will share a little bit of haul near the end. And I did take part, this is not totally um, stitching related, but kind of. I taught at a fun virtual paper crafting retreat for Spellbinders this last, or yesterday actually, it's still going on. Um, but I taught on Saturday a live class, which was amazing, but I have a new, um, I have new product. So I just, I have a line of dies coming out, but they're stitching related. So I thought I would share a little sneak peek. They will be released July 10th of this year to the public. Uh, obviously, if you purchased the kit and the box and took part in the event, you got part of those, but there will be extras coming. I'm not gonna show those here. That was a sneak peek for participants in the Weekender event for Spellbinders, but I do wanna show you um, the products that I did use in there because some of you I know are paper crafters too, and I guess I just want to get you excited about what maybe what's to come. Perfect for creating cards or other fun things, even decor items for your craft room. But I know if you've got, if you're like me and you've got um, stitching friends and you like to make cards, you might like these items. So I'm going to share a little sneak peek of those right off at right off the bat. Um, as always, I do have links down in the descri description box below to make it easy for you to find what you are looking for, hopefully. Uh, I also have timestamps so that if you want to skip to certain parts of the video or you want to watch certain things, you can do that easily. Uh, I think that is it for notes. Um, graduation. I know so last, that isn't true. I'll do a, a tiny life update. I don't do a ton of these, but I had filmed last week's floss tube very early uh, because I had company and all of that good stuff. So I have two updates to what I told you last week. Uh, a, my youngest has graduated high school and it was lovely. We had the most amazing uh, party here for him for friends and family. It was very nice and he had a wonderful time. He said multiple times, thank you. And he hugged me multiple times and said, thank you, which he's always a great, he's a very grateful child. It isn't, you know, that he's not, but I could tell it meant a lot to him. And so that made my mom, that this mama's heart super happy that he had such a nice time. And then um, the other thing is I gave my parents their anniversary piece. I'm just going to pop it. Actually, I'll pop it in right here. Uh, 
this is the piece I stitched for my parents. And you guys know if you've been here a while or you saw some of my recent videos, I restitched it from what I had originally done. And I was really happy with it. I showed the FFO in last week's video, which I will link to down in the description as well, if you wanna see how I finished that piece. But my parents absolutely loved it. I actually put it in my guest room right on the bed. And my dad was the first one to go in the guest room. And he was like, I saw it first. He, it was, he thought he was real cute and clever, but no, they were thrilled. Um, they, they thanked me many, many times. They loved it. And it was absolutely wonderful to spend a few days with them. So just a couple of little updates there. Let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. So I, I know this is a little bit different, but you guys know I am a paper crafter. So I do want to share Spellbinders hosted a virtual retreat. It is so well done. This is their instruction book. I am not going to show it to you because it has all of the instructor's cards and things in it. And it really shows a whole bunch of great, um, you know, cards, ideas, all of that good stuff. If you're ever, if you're a card maker and if you're ever able to, I highly recommend the Spellbinders virtual retreats. And just a little FYI, I am teaching live in August in Phoenix, and I will post more information and links to that down in the description as well. So um, my card for the event features, well, I should show you the dies. So sorry. So I'm going to show you the die sets. These are not available yet, but they will be um, here July 10th. So it is a stitching set, obviously. This is called the um, Gathering Stitches set. And it has the embroidery hoop. It has uh, the little hardware for the embroidery hoop. That's a bad glare, let's hold it like this. A rainbow with a layering piece, some florals, and then some long stems for like doing longer flowers. You can see one example here. I will have more examples. Um, as we get to the release of this product to the public, but really, really cute and fun. So this is kind of the base for everything. Um, and then we have the needle worker toolkit, which I was thrilled because I felt like we needed this add on. And it is a spool with thread, a needle with thread and some adorable uh, stork embroidery scissors. And here are the pieces for that. So with that in mind, those were the products I designed all of the other, not all, but um, quite a few of the other instructors also had dies they created. This is the card we made in class. My soul is fed with needle and thread. There is a stamp set. I don't want, I think that stamp set is being released, but I can't guarantee that. So I need to confirm that with everybody, but we created the background with one of the greetings I had in that stamp set and then the other one I used for my actual greeting. We did this fun little rainbow, spools, needle thread, embroidery scissors. Absolutely loved it so much. This was a joy to create. One of the things I mentioned in class about this is that the rainbow cut is a solid piece. I'll show you that die. So it's going to die cut, let's say from red, it's going to die cut, you know, all of these pieces in red. So you're gonna, basically what I'm saying, you're left with a lot of leftover pieces. So if you need to create a card set, you can rearrange the order of your rainbow pieces. And I just created a bunch of cards. <laughs> so you can create more uh, with that die cut as you can see there. So I just wanted to give a little sneak peek. Again, um, I'm putting it across the screen. These are not, this these dies are not available until July, but I did have a bonus card and I wanted to share that too. Just another fun kind of rainbow, bright, happy idea. Very similar background and all of that, but I concentrated on the needle worker kit. I pulled in a few elements, the flowers and leaves from the gathering stitches, but just really cute and fun and wanted to share that here for my stitchers and card makers. I will show you one more thing. Again, I'm not sharing the sneak peeks of the add-ons for this here. I will show those closer to release, but I also wanted to show another 
color way if maybe rainbow is not your thing. Uh, this is more of what I would call my neutrals palette. It's a lot of mauves and taupes, a little bit of yellow, plums, and then I did gold accents for the leaves and things. The background is the same idea as what I showed here, but I used a craft background instead. So just kind of something to keep in mind. Um, really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Uh, was really thrilled when they agreed to do my idea. <laughs> so it's really fun and I hope you guys are excited too. So let's talk about this week's FFO. So my seasonal Biscornu Sal wrapped up this week with a finishing tutorial. I'm linking that down in the description. If you want to see how I put together my Biscornu, you can check that out. It is mostly a real time video. It is a long video. It's all just under an hour. And that is because I recorded it in real time. Um, there is a little bit of sped up as we're stitching it together just because I did not want to have an hour and almost 40 minute video. Um, and at, But the first part of the stitching and the last part of the stitching is in real time. But that is the only real sped up version of it. Everything else from how to prep your fabric, add interfacing, how to trim it down, stitch it together, fill it, and add the button is included in the finishing tutorial. And I just want to thank you guys all again for participating, for watching along, for your comments, for um, just all of the fun, seeing how everybody finished their Biscornus. It was an amazing sal, and I look forward to bringing more sals like that to you in the future. There will be a sal in July that is announced here in June, so stay tuned for that. So this is my 32 count Biscornu using the Summer Basket from Hands On Design. I know I've shown my Biscornus many times. I will likely show all of them one more time when I finished my 36 count. I was not able to get this one completely finished. Graduation and, and that kind of put a damper on being able to get that one finished in time for the video. I hope to have that for you guys next week. But this is my 40 count and I love how these look together. I think they're so cute. And then I will show you my progress because I did stitch on my other one and that is one of my whips this week. So again, this is the seasonal Biscornu Sal using the hands-on design, the summer basket chart. I'm excited to set these out for patriotic display. I love seeing everybody's completed Biscornus. You guys have been absolutely amazing and it truly, truly does mean the world to me that you guys were excited about this project, that you participated. I know for a lot of you, this was a little out of your comfort zone maybe even. And maybe you learned a new skill and something that you can do. I've heard just the loveliest comments from many, many of you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. My goal with my stitch alongs is always, um, you know, to hopefully cheerlead, encourage you to finish. Um, and get you to that final finished product and maybe teach something, you know? Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. And again, thank you, thank you, you guys. I had the most wonderful time with this project and it's been a joy and I can't wait to see even more as more of you get your stitching finished and you assemble your Biscornu. That content will be there for you. Um, forever. You, there's a playlist especially for this stitch along and all of my stitch alongs. I have um, shown that a few times. I will also uh, probably, I'll put this down in the link today or the description today uh, to all of my past stitch alongs. I know I've heard from a couple people who said that they have gone back and they have worked through or are working through some of the past cells, which is so amazing. Um, there's the stitch with me weeklies and then a finishing tutorial. And that's just kind of how I do my cells here. And I love, love it that you guys participate. So again, thank you so much.
All right, we're going to leave this out and we are going to start talking about whips. And in this case, we're gonna go through all my whips that are stitch alongs. So even though I have wrapped up my seasonal Biscornu stitch along, I wanted to share my progress on my 36 count. So I am stitching the summer basket, this one right here up at the top, on 36 count charcoal Zweigart, one strand over two, and I'm using all the called for colors. I absolutely love how they look on this charcoal fabric. Um, funny enough, I this center color here, which I don't have my sheet. I want to say it's 3816. Don't quote me on that. I ran out, but I was able to get this center stitch. And I think that's the only place on this design that has aqua. So I'm probably good. I haven't gone to get another skein or anything like that. But I thought that was funny that between all of these that I have used that entire skein of floss. Now I had to frog a couple times, that might be why. So I won't be using this for the bottom of this Biscornu. I already know that, unless I go get another skein. Um, but I, like I said, I hope to have this one stitched, assembled, and finished to show for you next week because I'd like to have it done and ready for display. I love it on this fabric. If you have never tried stitching on a dark fabric, it is quite addictive. I did use this exact fabric to stitch the winter basket, and that's how it looks. So it does give you a completely different look. These, again, were all the called for fabrics from the winter basket, and it just gives it, like I said, a different look. It's really, really fun. So that is my progress on this one. Let's see what else we have. My next whip that is also a sal is the Botanical Bee. And this is a sal put on by my friend Shari Moss. She has a YouTube channel here as well as a floss tube channel where she shares all of her things and she uh, just does beautiful videos. And she wanted to do a sal. This is her the first sal she's hosted herself. She did co-host the Valentine's Quaker Sal earlier this year for Primrose Cottage. It was my stitching group and I co-hosted that. This is her first individual Sal and she will have another one coming up so I will talk about that when she announces it. But I am a little bit behind on this with you know all of the things that happen for me this month, just lots of things going on, but I have been working on it. It does, for me, I think it stitches super, super fast. I am using the called for color of fabric. This is Juniper by Fabrics by Stephanie, but the chart calls for 32. I am stitching on 36. I love this color. I love everything about this. Mine will end up being a little bit smaller than the, the chart, but I stitched... I mean, in just like maybe an hour's worth of time this morning, I stitched the wing, the greenery here, these little parts of these little flowers, a little, I had a little bit of green, I did the rest of it, and then a little bit of pink. So my goal is to have a good portion of the rest of this stitched this evening. Um, or, you know, by next week, we'll see where we get to. But again, this is a sal going on, hosted by Shari Moss. So check out her channel for all of the information and I will be sharing my finishing as I get to it. So I mentioned in the intro that there is a new sal that was announced this last week. My friends Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher, Chantal and I decided to do a sal, kind of an informal sal, with the Annie B's Folk Art American Sampler House. I have loved this chart since I saw my friend Wanda stitch it last year. And um, I didn't stitch it and I didn't even pick it up. And I was kind of sad about it. So when Jessica approached us and said, hey, do you wanna do a sal? I was like, yes. So um, you can pick this up from online and 
local needlework shops. I know it's sold out a few places, but just do a search for it and reach out to your favorite shop and see if they can get it. Hopefully they can get it pretty soon. There is no end date. We did start it this last week, but again, no worries on when you start or finish. I think it stitches up really quick. This was, I call this my Bridgerton stitch, which is funny enough, I understand. That's an English, you know, period drama and I'm stitching my patriotic American chart. Don't come at me. I wanted to start it and I wanted to watch the new season. So that's what I did. So basically this is mostly four hours. It's not really even all four hours of stitching. Some of that, that time watching, I was watching and not stitching. <laughs> just to be completely transparent. But that is what I did for this. I started this on the 16th um, and here's where I'm at. I think it stitches beautifully. I am using almost all the called for floss with the exception of the color of the house is called for is um, a crew by DMC. And I didn't have it. And I had several skeins of Weeks Dye Works grits and a lot of the colors in here are Weeks. So I actually just decided to stitch my house and all the white areas with grits. I love grits, so I was fine with that. Um, that's my only change that I've made to this. My plan, you can see once you have your flag, my flag is almost done. I just have like the little tails, the rest of this section and the little tail. Once I have that, I'm gonna finish the letters for my house the windows and the door. I'm going to outline this and then I'm going to work on all of the little stars and the planter and the border down this side so that all I have to do is sit and do fill in for the house. That was kind of my plan for this. I think all of this little stuff will go fairly quickly but fill in is probably going to be the worst part. I want to do all of the alphabet all of the windows and like I said doors so that and then outline it so it's just something that I don't even have to think about. I prefer to do anything inside first and then fill in as opposed to trying to stitch the white and stitch around each letter. I For me this just works better. So um, I would love if you are joining let me know down in the comments if you are going to stitch this along with us. No end date or anything like that. Just kind of stitch as you like to. Okay, let's talk new start and whips. I mentioned that for Mother's Day, my Mother's Day new start was the Plum Street Samplers, This Is The Day. I have had this kitted up for a year and I had kept meaning to start it and never did. And I did start this on Mother's Day. I did take it pretty easy last Sunday. I was really tired. I had to do some cleaning from the party. Um, my parents left. Um, and then I stitched a little, but I also took a nap. <laughs> I just needed a nap. So I did get a start. Here is my start on this chart. I stitched the top border. I started stitching the little goat up here. And then I started, I want to do the flower basket. I basically stitched to a, until I could get to the flower basket. I did want to stitch my top border to make sure I had enough room. I might need to zoom out. Just a bit. I want. I had this fabric cut to size before my LNS went out of business. I believe this calls for, yeah, this calls for Barb's Blend, but this is Winter Brew by R&R. &R. So... Um, that's what I am working on. I'm using all the called for floss. I think I'm missing a couple of colors. I need to look at that again. I made a little list. Oh yeah, I'm missing a, a crew on this as well. Yeah, I must have stole my a crew at some point to stitch something else and I don't know what bag it's in. That's fine. I'm just going to go get some. But yeah, stitching all of the called for I love it. I did not want to put it down. This is actually, it's funny. This border seemed like it took forever. I did not love stitching it, even though it's just repetitive and super easy. I wanted to get down into stitching something fun. 
but I really, really wanted to see that I had left the right margin up here. It was cut to size, so I'm sure I'm fine. But then as soon as I got to stitching on the flower basket or the flower pot with the flowers, I didn't want to stop. So it was kind of hard to switch gears and work on some of those other things this week. But I am loving it. And that is, this is the day. And it was my Mother's Day start. So my goal is to just kind of work on this until I get it done. As I can. Okay. My last... It's, it's a whip, but a whip, whoops, it's a whip finish, I guess, if you will. Last week I said, I think it was last week, I talked about, or the week before, all of the weeks run in together. I'm working on the, the uh, Moment in Chalk, Chalk Squared series from Hands On Design all year long. I am a little bit behind. I was working on my April month. So now I can work on May. And I had stitched most of this one. I need to put my needle somewhere else, but we'll put it here for now. I had stitched most of this, but I hadn't finished it. But I did manage to get this one finished, which I love. And then this kind of, I feel like this is kind of open, but that's because buttons go here. And I've talked about this before. My buttons will all go on at the end. I'm not doing them right now. I am stitching this. I think I forgot to tell you guys most of my fabric today. 36 count winter brew. Um, I think I stopped telling on this one. This is 32 count salt bush by Fox and Rabbit. Jessica, Chantal, and I are all stitching on different counts of fabric. Sorry to go backwards, but I do want to mention that. I will, in editing, put that across the screen, but I did want to mention. So this is 32 count charcoal gray Lugana by Zweigart. Stitching two over two on this one as it's 32 count. If I stitch on 36, I stitch one over two. And I'm going to hold this up and show you guys because it's it's a big one she's a big girl so here is where I'm at and I am loving it I have that whole top border now I love it so much ignore the wrinkles I didn't iron it out for you or anything like that now it does have a ton of white stitching that goes all a border that goes all the way around that I had every intention of stitching monthly. It's not happened. I mentioned in my last video where I talked about this, I'm taking this with me to my friend Lake Weekend and I'm gonna work on stitching white until I don't wanna stitch white anymore. And you know, whatever else we end up stitching. But that is my April and now I can move on to May. So hopefully I'll be uh, back on schedule but I'm loving 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 this stitch the colors are absolutely beautiful I love this color fabric this is the same color fabric as the linen that I'm stitching on for a lot of things like the summer basket and the winter basket that I showed you all right so I believe that is all of my stitching this week that I have to share. So let's talk um, a little bit about something exciting coming. Um, I'm gonna put a sneak peek in photo right here. My good friend Chantal of 141 Design has teamed up with Kathy Haberman of Hands On Design and there is a fun little uh, kit exclusive coming from Chantal. You can pre-order it now. She did a poll a couple weeks ago in her Wednesday evening um, shop talk videos that she does and overwhelming people wanted a pre-order. So she has a pre-order up. It will ship out in June, early to mid June, sometime around there. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to be stitching it. So super excited about that. But if you want to get in on that chart, because it will only be available 
um, exclusively through Chantal for a while. So you might want to jump in on that. It's so, so fun. And I cannot wait for everybody to see it and stitch it. Um, like I said, I'm going to stitch it, but I will have a link down below if you're interested in picking that up. The next thing I want to mention that I have not finished my risers from 141 Design for my Biscornos yet. I have really been struggling with how I want to finish mine for display. Do I want to paint them? Do I want to paint them an exclusive, you know, to work just with the summer, which I'm I'm really leaning towards you guys. I wasn't going to, but I I thought I might stain them, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to paint them in leaning towards red. Um maybe they won't both be red. Maybe I'll just do one or the other. I don't know. But um these are also available from Fat Quarter Shop. That is what I wanted to talk to you guys about because if you're already placing an order from Fat Quarter Shop, you can throw these in your cart and pick them up there. Um, especially if you're not just ordering this from 141 Design, you can always pick these up from 141 Design, but I did wanna let you know that you can get these now at Fat Quarter Shop, which is super exciting. Also from Fat Quarter Shop, let's jump into haul. And um, because I only have a couple things, because those also you can get from 141 Design or Fat Quarter Shop. Okay, so last year, Teresa Kogut came out with some adorable flying Santas that flew off the shelf during Jingle Ball and then were available later on. Chantal of 141 Design made the coordinating wood pieces for them. Well, Teresa Kogut has come out with her bunny thieves. Now, Bunnies, yes, great for Easter and spring, but if you are a strawberry stitcher, I especially think these two here on the left or the left in the middle would be perfect for your strawberry displays. So again, Teresa teamed up with Chantal and you can pick up the chart and you can pick up the finishing kit. Uh, either at 141 Design or Fat Quarter Shop or your favorite LNS or ONS. I wanted to mention this because let's say you you want to pick this up and then you want to pick up risers. It's awesome that you can kind of pick all of this up and then you're maybe getting floss or you're buying fabric or whatever it is that you're buying. You can put it all in your cart and get it from Fat Quarter Shop if you're already shopping there. So you can see all the little pieces. I am going to stitch these. These are stitched on white. I should have just taken this out of the package probably. It's white perforated paper. If it is in stock, I cannot promise because I have not looked. If this is in stock, I will link it. I po I had linked it previously. Yes, white 14 count white perforated paper. Uh, it is, there's a classic color works, lots of DMC and a Weeks Dye Works color. But there's also um, the DMC conversion for those overdyes if you want to. The bunnies are stitched with an overdyed, and I would recommend probably stitching your bunnies with the overdyed floss so you get that variegation in color. But isn't that just darling? I just thought these were so, so fun. So I forgot to show this to you guys last week. In fact, I have. Everything I'm showing you, I've had for either one, two, three weeks. I don't know. I, it was in a place in my office that I forgot. The next thing I wanted to show were I did pick up some of these dies from Binzi Design. I talk about Binzi before. I love their felt and their dies. They had some great florals that I'm going to do some fun things with. So I picked up these here. I will link all of these down in the description below. And I will be showing how I'm using these in an upcoming video. And for patriotic stitchers, look at these cuties. In different sizes. I just thought these were super fun. So um, just wanted to show you guys those for felt stitching. And then totally forgot to show my latest case from Rika of Houses of Stitch and Stash. This is in the Camille Ross Kelly shoreline. Is, am I saying that right? If I said it wrong, I'll put it across the screen. 
I love Rika's cases. They are so beautifully done. Uh, vinyl zip zipper pocket on this side, big zipper. Uh, the felt over here, these are pockets. This is a pocket, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I don't know if she is taking any more in kind of, it's a kind of subscription based month by month thing, but sometimes she has some that are not you know, paid for and she'll offer them up. But I will put a link to Rika down below. You can reach out to her and see. But I can't say enough great things about the quality of these. I absolutely love them. They're really, really beautiful. So love that. And then I did have just a few other things. My Floss Fix, which is the classic color works club from Fat Quarter Shop came. They do go in alphabetical order and I am just adding these to my stash. These two colors together are just gorgeous. So here is the colors for May. Fool's Gold, Four Leaf Clover, Fresh Brew, Frog Legs, Frosted Sage, and Frosty. Love that. I'll put those like I said, into my stash. Um, the other thing I picked up, I did pick up a couple of these Shepherd's Bush patterns, which are made to be stitched on the new um, Mad for Plaid mini project bags from It's So Emma and Fat Quarter Shop. So I picked up Sew so and Buzz I actually have several of these to stitch in the big size as well. And I think I forgot to pick up this color, but I did get the um, Misty color bag. These don't look like they will take that much time to stitch, but I love these for keeping like your floss and little things inside of your bigger bag so that it isn't like touching, let's say, um, your project. So I loved the idea of that. So I did pick up these. I need to pick up the buttons. I think I forgot to get the buttons too. I see that I was really organized with my shopping. And then I am working on a project that I'm not showing yet, but I want to show you this fabric before it's out of stock. I am sewing up a bag and project bag and things with this. It is the uh, Bloomberry Collection by Minky, Ki Minky Kim, who I love her tutorials on FlossTube. I will link to her channel down below, and I will link to this collection. Uh, maybe not the exact all of the exact products. We'll see. I don't know what's still in stock and what isn't, but this is the Jelly Roll, which is what I needed for the project I'm working on, and. I got this and then I also picked up this panel and I know that this has gone out of stock at least once. It did come back into stock. I don't know if it's in stock. I will put on the screen if it's not. You may have to look for it, but it is to make little pouches, kind of like along the lines of those Shepherd's Bush pouches I showed before, but you could use these for anything. But I believe each panel, let's just flip the view. <coughs> Each panel comes with enough, it comes with the binding and everything. I'm trying to think how much it makes. There, It makes little coasters and you can make a whole bunch of bags. Let's see if I can show you the whole thing. So here's a lot of it. Does it say? I'm looking, I can't read backwards. And then here is the other half. So I did pick this up. She has tutorials on her channel showing how to sew all of these, but I thought these, I just, I love her collections. I kind of have a whole, st I have all of them. <laughs> They're actually in these bins right here. And I have mixed in, those are the fat quarters. I mix and match them. They're sorted by color. So I've mixed all of her different collections together because I love them. But that is her panel her little bag panel for this Bloomberry collection. She also has some other fun things in that collection as well. So you might want to check that out. And that is it for haul.
this week. So a few weeks ago, I said that I have, I believe I told you at the time, two patriotic charts that I really, really want to stitch and work on this year for my patriotic stitching. And I'm going to share those with you today. Obviously, I've also pulled in the American Sampler House from Annie B's, but these are the two in addition to that. Now, I know one of them has a stitch along that is starting, I believe, June 1st. I think it is Deb of Snug Harbor Crafts and Stitchy Linda are hosting it. Um, but it's just something I really wanted to stitch and I picked it up probably probably along with a lot of you at market this year. So I'm gonna flip my camera around. I'm gonna show you these two. I'm going to get them kitted completely this week, put in my patriotic project bag and um, hopefully I can get a start on these soon. I have a few other things I wanna finish up first but I wanna have these completely kitted and ready to go, and these are my priority stitches. I think that's how I should say that. These two patriotic stitches are my two priority patriotic stitches, the things I really, really wanna stitch. I'm gonna finish American Sampler House first. I don't think it will take too long, but then one of the two of these, I'm gonna start stitching on um, right away. <laughs> so first up, of course, is Plum Street Samplers American Welcome. This was a retreat exclusive and then it was released here from Plum Street Samplers at Market. It is so beautiful, you guys. And everyone I see stitching it, I'm so eager to get started. Now it is, the floss called for is a combination of Overdyed and DMC. I will tell you, I bought the color. So then there's a conversion on the overdyed conversion or overdyed floss, pardon me. There's a conversion for the overdyeds. I need to pick up the DMC for this, but I did pick up the color and cotton conversion for this chart from color and cotton. Look at those colors. Oh my gosh, you guys, so pretty. Now, the fabric I pulled to stitch mine on, the called for fabric, this was um, a kit, I believe, or yes, it was for Farm Girl Dry Goods, I believe. And the model was stitched on 36 count Old Amana, which is a custom dye from Farm Girl Dry Goods, and it's not in stock currently. Now, the alternative is Hogs Bristle by Fox and Rabbit. I don't even know if I looked for it. I actually went to my stash and I pulled Cedar River Linens Maple Bar to stitch mine on, and I, I like it. I think that's going to be beautiful. So this is 36 count Maple Bar by Cedar River Lin Linens. I love Cedar River Linens. So that is my first patriotic project that I am kidding up for 2024. My second is something else I picked up last year, but that was an exclusive to Kitten Stitcher. But now you can, and so mine is shown together, but you can buy these separately. Part of this was designed by Plum Street Samplers and the other by Shakespeare's Peddler Kitten Stitcher. And you can stitch them together like this, or you can just pick one or the other. I will link to these down below, but I loved these last year. I picked them up. I can't wait to stitch them. I just think they're beautiful. It's the stars and the stripes. Now I have not even kitted this one. Let's look and see what it's called for, shall we? They were stitched on 40 count graham cracker, and I do think I have that actually. So I might just stitch them right on there. And then the, the threads are classic color works, weeks dye works, and a DMC conversion is provided inside. Absolutely so beautiful. I love these so much. So I am going to kit up, completely kit up both of these. I do think I have the called for fabric. I'm almost 100% positive. So I will use that for these. But in case you're interested or whatever, um, and I do think I have so much fun doing these polls with you guys, <laughs> having you guys pick which one I should start. So 
we are going to do a poll. Tell me down in the comments. I'll also put polls up, but you can do both because I love reading them. Which one should I start first after I finish American Sampler House? Should I start start the Stars and Stripes by Kitten Stitcher and Plum Street Sampler or should I start American Welcome? You guys tell me. Tell me down in the comments. Let me know. Um, I love... I love doing it because I love hearing from you guys. I think it's so fun to read your comments. So um, those are the two patriotic charts right now that are on my radar. I don't even know I need to go through my whips. I know for sure I have one patriotic whip that is not finished. Obviously it's a whip. Um, but if you want me to share the patriotic charts in my stash and the whips that I have, let me know. Let me know if I should maybe share those in um, an upcoming floss tube episode. I think that would be really, really fun. So um, that is it for my patriotic stitching I'm excited about this year. Okay, giveaway time. Winners will be announced in a rolling screen here at the end of my video. So look for that. Um, I think I don't remember if I've heard from everybody from previous videos or not, but check that and um, see if you are a winner. And then I have two giveaways for you this week. So please make sure that you are a subscriber, you like the video, please be a US resident. I do have to ask for your address, so be over 18. And um, leave the keyword somewhere in your comment to be considered for um, each of these giveaways. So the first giveaway today, I am giving away two pieces of 14 count Ada from Picture This Plus. A few weeks ago, a generous viewer shared some of her Ada Picture This Plus collection with me. I am going to start offering some of these as giveaways. This is 14 count Ariel by Picture This Plus, and I believe it's a fat quarter. Maybe, yeah, I think so. And then this is Nocturne. So these are blues. That looks like a little bit less. I don't know exactly how much is in each of these, but absolutely gorgeous colors. You can see the modeling in the fabric would be beautiful, um, would be beautiful for, you know, winter stitches, summer stitches. I could see patriotic stitched on this, all kinds of things. If you are an Ada stitcher, leave the word picture somewhere in your comment to be considered for the picture this plus Ada. Next, I have one of these B project bags. This is using my uh, bag making tutorial here on my channel. The link is down in the description. If you wanna see how I made this, I made a patriotic bag in the video tutorial, but this is a B bag that I made with some leftover fabric from another project I created where I made some project cases from Chris Sherman of Winding Rainbows pattern. Um, then I just used all my leftovers for this. So this is a B project bag and I would like to offer it to one of you. It uses a, or has features a little bumblebee charm from the Cherry Chick Biz or decorative sewing pins. And here's what the inside looks like. So it's fully finished on the front and the back. Leave the word B somewhere in your comment if you would like to win this custom project bag made by me with love by me uh, put the word B in your comment okay friends I think that is it for today please make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to see if you are a winner from past videos and I hope everyone has a fantastic stitchy week I am looking forward to the upcoming three-day weekend. I think my kids and I are going for a hike somewhere local. 
Um, I'm looking forward to my friend coming home. There is something I stitched this week. Partly, sometimes I can't always share everything. There's a couple of things I'm not sharing that I have worked on. Um, and I say this now because, you know, there's times that you have gifts for people and you don't want to share it ahead of time and I don't want to ruin it. So I have a friend who celebrated a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday or belated birthday, Lori. I talked to her yesterday, but happy birthday, Lori. I did make something for her, but I can't, I'm not sharing it till I give it to her. She's away at her lake house, living her best life. <laughs> no. Um, so when she comes home, or to this home close to me, I can give her the present I got for her, but I have filmed it and I'll share it with you guys um, after I've given her her present and she sees it first there. I don't want her to have her see it first here. Um, the other thing that I, I'm not done with, so I haven't like completely filmed it, but I am spending a weekend with friends coming up in June. So I'm working on something to gift them when I see them. And that video will not, that video will air as I am with them. So they will have already received their gifts. So there are things going on back behind the scenes as always, but you know how it is. I just don't want to ruin the surprise. You never want to ruin the surprise. So um, I think that is it this week. Tell me in the comments, you know, what you guys are stitching, what you're working on, um, especially if you're not leaving a comment for a giveaway, but you just want to talk or just want to share that with me. That's what I want to say. If you just want to share that with me, I would love to hear what you guys are working on, what you are excited about, especially since I shared um, what I want to stitch first. <laughs> for summer stitching for my patriotic stitching. Obviously I started the American Sampler House, but um, the other charts that I shared that are my priority there, I have so many. I might share like the patriotic charts. If you guys want to see like what I have in my stash, let me know. Um, obviously I just shared a couple of them this week that are my top two that are being kitted and or are kitted or are being kitted because I really, really want to stitch those. So um, I guess that is it for this week. Have a wonderful week. I will be here next week, even though it's a um, holiday weekend here in the US, I will film likely ahead of time, um, like I did last week. I generally like to film ahead of time, but it doesn't always happen. Um, I'll film ahead of time. The video will go up next week. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I do plan to have another really fun giveaway for you guys next week. So stay tuned for that. And I think that's all I've got. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. I have been working on... I have no idea. Uh, no!